Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the Nitty Witch Podcast episode 15. I am Vanessa Nitty Witch on Instagram and Ravelry. You can find my shop at nittywitch.com and you can email me at nittywitchshop at gmail.com. It has been a little bit since I podcasted last. We did have the Rhinebeck episode and Rhinebeck, so that was fun. I've actually been really nostalgic and catching up on everyone's Rhinebeck episodes that they filmed and watching those and reliving the moment over and over again again to get that wonderful feeling that I had when I was there. I really miss everyone and I can't wait to see everyone again soon. So to get some administrative stuff out of the way right off the bat, before we get into things, I wanted to mention that one of my coven members is having a giveaway in their Etsy shop, and that is Fanny of Mitaine Croquet on Etsy, and she will donate an advent to someone for every five purchases using the code NITTYWITCH10. If you use the code NITTYWITCH10 in her shop, that will give you 10% off. You can email her to nominate someone if you feel that they are deserving of a free advent calendar, which would be really nice this holiday season. So if you know someone that is really in need of a calendar and can use one, then reach out to her and nominate someone. Just a wonderful thing that she's doing. Also, I want to mention that if you head over to Summer Camp Fibers, which is the home of the Knit Kit, they are the Knit Kit on Instagram, you can use the code NITTYWITCH and receive 10% off of your order there as well. So save yourself some money and if you happen to be shopping in those areas, then use the code and save yourself some cash. So I'm going to throw this away to the side, all my notes here. So what have I been up to? <laughs> well, but to get into works in progress or maybe not works in progress anymore, I was participating in the Stephen West MCAL that came out, the Twist and Turns MCAL, and I made it to Clue 1, halfway through Clue 1, before I decided that it just was not for me. It was not bringing me joy. It was very tedious. And I don't mind tedious if I'm going to really love the outcome. But to not love something and then to put like that much work into it and not love it in the end is just not something that I'm up for, especially when we put out a good amount of money for yarn um, for these projects. So now my Twist and Turns MCAL leads into my first whip. So my first whip is living in this gorgeous bag from a Stitchy Girl studio on Etsy. This was a gift from my friend Justine. I don't know if you can see, that's her tag right there. I am now, so after receiving this bag and a few others, I don't want to have any project bag that isn't witchy. Now I want all the witchy project bags. <laughs> so I... I'm using Summer Camp Fibers for this shawl knit along that I did. I was using Summer Camp Fibers, which I absolutely love their stuff, which is why I became an affiliate. Katie does an amazing job at bringing color and brightness into the world, and I love that. So instead of my Twist and Turns MCAL, I looked up a few patterns on Ravelry and decided on the three color cashmere shawl from Hohi Locatelli. Now my version is not cashmere. My version is, actually if I can grab the ball band, my version is using Summer Camp Fibers, right there is the label. And this is Marshmallow Sock. It's a four ply 7525 base. This is Katie's Pink that I have the band for here. So here is, of course I'm in the middle of a row. Here is where I'm at. So it's kind of hard to see, obviously, because it's on the needles, but 
here is like the top of it. So it starts out that way and it has some striping and then it's got this beautiful contrast pop of color right here in this section, which I am just absolutely loving the way that these colors are coming together. I think that was a good choice, but if you know me, you know my colors are pink, purple, and blue all day long. You can see it all in my stash. And of course I have some beautiful reds because I love red. I have dyed my hair. I, I tend to knit and make things based on what my hair color is for the moment. So I have lots of reds because I've had lots of red hair. I have lots of pinks because I've had lots of purple hair. So this is the first time I've had pink hair and I have to say that it is my absolute, absolute favorite. It's faded out right now and that's okay. I love the way it's fading. So I am matching my knitting to my hair. So yeah, I, I absolutely love this. So here are the, here's the blue. And I can't say enough about like how good and relaxing this pattern is. It's a very, it's interesting. Like it has enough to keep you interested that you don't get bored, but it is for the most part mindless up until this point. And maybe not completely mindless, but very intuitive and relaxing. So I'm enjoying this project way more than I was enjoying the Stephen West MCAL. Which is actually funny because I'm just gonna go ahead and like lead into the fact that um so the twist and turns MCAL was not for me. I think that it was a little bit busy maybe for my tastes. A little too artistic for me. I I have like um not a love hate relationship with Stephen West because that's not it at all. It's like a love love relationship, except that I just don't love everything. I either love it or I don't love it, and this was one of those not love ones. However, did you see in his hybrid knitting book the new Aurora Cabin Shawl? Because I think it is. Stunning. It is this absolute beautiful, beautiful shawl pattern that is, I, I can't even describe it. It is just, I feel like it's a masterpiece. It is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. And since we're talking about that, I have decided for the Aurora Cabin Shawl, and I'll throw up pictures of this shawl that I'm going to be using my Asylum Fibers kit because the shawl requires five colors and these are perfect. So I was originally going to make the bubble cardigan from Stephen West also and use these colors and throw in a couple extra because that one uses seven colors. So I had like two colors in stash that I was able to throw in here. But after seeing the Aurora Cabin shawl, now this is perfection and I cannot wait to get this started. So that is actually not going to happen for probably until next year because I, I'm itching to start it right now. Like I really, really want to, but I want to finish my Hohi Locatelli shawl and then for December, I have an advent calendar coming that I'll talk about later if I don't forget. <laughs> an advent calendar later that's actually a shawl knit along. So I'm going to be knitting a shawl in December and I just, that's too many shawls. Like to be the Aurora cabin shawl looks like it's going to re not require all of my attention, but I'm going to want to give it all of my attention. I have a feeling that once I get started on that project, I'm not going to want to put it down. So I am not going to start that yet, but I am so excited about it. It's like with Stephen West, you never know what's going to happen. And I love that. I think he is like, I was talking to a friend of mine <clears throat> And excuse me. And I was saying that he's like a mad scientist. Like you never know what he's going to cook up in his lab. And I feel like this is one of those perfect examples. Twist and turns came out. It threw everyone for a little bit of a curve. And then hibernating comes out and you have the Aurora cabin shawl. And just 
beautiful and genius. So as you can see, I am super excited about that future knit. So for my next work in progress, this podcast is going to be a little bit bouncy and jumpy all over the place because one thing leads to another and it is what it is. So I apologize if it's a little scattered, but scattered is me. So my next whip is living in my Dolphina collective bag. So there is Dolphina's tag. And I love this one. This one says knitting takes balls and it has like this tattoo design and she look at the stitching on that she stitched hearts on it so cute so in my coven of crafters I was hosting and sorry I'm a little tangled here so in my coven of crafters I was hosting a Halloween sock along so these are my socks that I did not finish. I got super distracted with the MCAL and with like everything else going on in October. If you watched my Vlogtober, you know I didn't have much going on. <laughs> I just got really distracted with the MCAL. Basically, what happened was once I started the MCAL, I wanted to give it all of my attention. And then it got to the point where I was really unhappy and I wasn't knitting anything. Not the socks, not the shawl. I was just in a funk. So unfortunately, I didn't finish my socks. But look at this beautiful yarn. So this yarn was sent to me by Lacey of Mermaid Tangles. She's Mermaid Tangles Yarn Co. I apologize to everyone who wanted to get this yarn and was not able to. She has not dyed more up that more up of it that I know yet but I'm sure in the future she will have an update to her shop and I would just keep an eye out favored her Etsy shop because I think great things are coming from her. I think that if she continues on with yarn like this that's absolutely stunning, her shop is going to blow up. So she's starting out new, which is we all have to start somewhere. And just look at this beautiful yarn. I'm I'm just in love with it. So this is the first sock. And it is the only sock that got made. Here is, oh, here is Lacey's Mermaid Tingles Yarn Co. So I did not finish that, but you didn't have to finish. So to participate in this knit along, you just had to participate. It didn't have to be a finished object. You just had to show that you were working on something. I know as knitters, we if we start something, we want to work on it and we want to finish it, right? It's not like we don't want to. We wouldn't start something if we didn't want to finish it, but sometimes just life gets in the way. Oh, also I inherited a grandfather clock and it is dinging right now. It's actually a grandmother clock. Learn the difference. Apparently they wind differently. There's a difference. I don't know exactly the difference, but it has to do with how they're wound. So it is the top of the hour. So back to the knit along. So you did not have to finish. Everyone was eligible who started and who posted pictures. So uh, the winner of that knit along, I'm just going to announce right here is Teresa of Teresa Knit Stuff. Teresa is one of my Canadian friends and I think she is great. I love her. Thank you everyone for participating in that Halloween make along and we're going to have another one soon. I'll talk about that later but thank you so much and Teresa I'm going to be sending you some pretty twisted yarns and some goodies. So contact me and I'll probably reach out to you, but contact me and let me have your information so I could get this sent out to you. And congratulations. Okay, so that is it for my works in progress because honestly, that's all I've been working on um, since I ripped out the shawl. But I did want to revisit my Lark, for, Lark Spur Socks by Curious Conundrums. I love this pattern. I think it is so beautiful. I think all pattern socks are beautiful. 
but patterned socks are just not for me because I feel like I put a lot of effort into them and I could be putting effort into something bigger. I'm just more of like a sweater person and shawl person, which is funny because I never wear my shawls, but I love making them. It's my art pieces. I love creating shawls. I think they're great. And I love knitting socks, but when I knit socks, I love the mindlessness of them and to see what the yarn does. Like when I buy sock yarn, I buy sock yarn that I like and I want to see how the dye knits up, like the, the color work on the sock. And a lot of pattern socks you won't see. So you usually use like a planer yarn or something more tonal. And being like, that's absolutely beautiful. And that's great. But I don't wear my knitted socks as often as I should. I have a lot of knitted socks. I have about 20 something pairs, which I think is a lot. And I'm not going to continue on with these because I just don't have the time. Like I have everything else going and as much as I love these, I'm not gonna finish them. So it has nothing to do with the pattern. It has nothing to do with anything, the yarn. It just has to do with me. I don't wanna knit a pattern sock. It doesn't make me happy. So I'm going to be frogging these. They came out so pretty too. Like look at how pretty that is. I just think that if I get back to knitting these, it's going to be a really long time. Like it's not a priority to me to finish these. So they would hibernate and I'm not really a big on letting my projects hibernate for too long. If they hibernate for too long, I rip them out and I already can see that this is going to be on like the back burner. So I'm going to be frogging these. And then if I do want to knit them again in the future, I'll just start over and crank them out um, like straight through. I won't stop and take a break. So that is that. My, I'm sorry, I have like a piece of fuzz on the top of my lip and it's itching. <laughs> so I have been working, Have I'm sorry, I have not been working on my sweater, my Bay Heaven cardigan, because I've been working on the shawl, so I'm not going to show you that. And that's all I have for whips. I don't have any FOs, so the last thing I have to get into with you is acquisitions. But I'm really excited about these acquisitions, like super excited. So the first acquisition that I have is from Pretty Twisted Yarns. This was a gift, a birthday gift from my dear friend Wanda. And she sent me some of Teresa's Pretty Twisted Yarns Christmas yarn. This is the Festive AF colorway because it is like look at that. I love it. I cannot wait to cast something on. And I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if I'm going to like pair it with something and make it a shawl or if I'm going to make it a sock yet. I have not decided, but it is so gorgeous. And Teresa's yarn is amazing. And I want to talk about that for a second because I feel, and I could be wrong, I feel like self-striping yarn is a dying breed and I don't want it to be. Um, not commercial, hand dyed. I feel that it is a lot of work to dye and this is not self-striping, but Teresa does a lot of self-striping yarn and it is a lot of work, guys. To do self-striping is a lot of work to the point where they really should be charging like $50 a skein, but they're only charging around 30, 35 because that's all the consumer wants to pay. No one wants to pay more for the work that actually goes into it. And I feel that self-striping dyers are dyeing less self-striping yarn. And 
I don't want that to happen. So please get out there. Please support your local yarn dyers and your indie dyers. And if you see something you like and you can afford it, purchase from them if you can and keep their businesses going because I don't want these businesses to lose out. They're just too talented and too amazing. And Teresa is one of those. So she's going to be coming out with more Christmas colorways. So stay tuned for that. Also, my, I'm just going to throw out my friend Andy, her husband has Hearing Colors Dye Works. And Hearing Colors Dye Works is also dyeing up Christmas colorways. So if you're looking for Christmas yarn, those are two people that you can get it from, Hearing Colors, and you can get it from Teresa Pretty Twisted Yarns. These are both really good friends of mine who I love dearly. And go out and support them if you can. So, yeah. The next thing that I have for you, I am... So excited to share. So I was gifted these bags from Slick Chick Yarn, uh, bags, not yarns, Slick Chick bags. Okay, <laughs> look at this. So it has a little bit of fluff in it. So it is a vinyl bag. So this is also a vinyl material. And there is the clear vinyl right there that is very popular right now with bag makers. And she has paired them in her own style. And they're witchy. Hello. I am so floored that, first of all, that she thought of me because I, this is like, my favorite. It is amazing. I love it. I've been waiting to show this to you guys before I use it. So it's been sitting here and I have not gotten to use it, but I am waiting to throw a project in here. I cannot wait. So she also, look at the zipper pull. Like it's a Ouija board planchette. Like, oh my God. So happy, like so happy. Thank you so much for sending this to me. And she also sent me this 100% That Witch bag with the bats and the black vinyl. I love it. I love it so much. And this one has a witch hat, zipper pull. So thank you so much. I'm so excited to share these. Her, I will link her shop down below. She is on Etsy and she does have a few bags available. I've actually wanted to go in there and buy one myself. And I'm thinking I might actually do that before you guys get on there and buy them all. <laughs> I might snag one more. <laughs> so yeah, check her out. Her bags are phenomenal. I love them. I love the aesthetic. I think they're great and you're going to love them too. And it came with little stickers and stitch markers. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. All right. So the next acquisition that I have, I was visiting in October. I visited my sister in Long Island and I stayed with her for a week. And the main reason I went up there was because um, November 1st is the anniversary. It was the two year anniversary of my father's passing and I had not yet been to his gravesite. So that was why I was up in New York. Um, I got to celebrate while I was there. I got to celebrate my nephew Ronan's first birthday. He was also born on November 1st. I think he, yeah, he's one. So he was born on November 1st. So the 30th was his birthday party and it was a costume party. So I got to dress up as a rainbow pinata for his costume party, which was a hit. Everyone loved it. 
Then we celebrated Halloween. So I went trick-or-treating with my nephews, my sister's children. And then we visited my dad's grave and the first. I left and was able to meet up with my friend Natalie, uh, who is Nitty Natty on all the things. YouTube, Instagram. If you haven't heard of her, I'd be surprised. She's wonderful. You have to check her out if you haven't yet. Natalie is a ray of sunshine. I was going to put an expletive in there, but to keep it safe, <laughs> she's amazing. And we had so much fun in the city. And while I was visiting her, we visited Nitty City, which is one of my favorite places to visit when I go to the city. So while I was at Nitty City, they gave me my order in this cute little bag. And they had a local dyer. Yarn over New York. And this is their Times Square sock weight yarn, 7525, 462 yards. And this colorway is electric sheep. Um, I just mentioned that my favorite colors are purple, pink, and blue. Was there ever a, a like a situation where I walked out of the store without this? No, no situation exists where I was going to walk out of the store without this yarn. So I got two of these. And then I grabbed an accent color and this is Rose Coquant. Not really sure how to say that, but so this is, I'm not really sure if I'm going to find a pattern or create a pattern for this trio. But hello, <laughs> look at this, it's amazing. And I love it so, so, so much. So not sure what I'm gonna make with those yet, but I was just like, I had such a great time there. I had such a great time in the city. Thank you so much, Natalie, for meeting up with me. And I can't wait to see her again. So a couple things coming up. I have Vlogmas that I will be doing in December. Vlogmas last the 1st through the 25th of December. Some people go longer. I may or may not. I might actually go longer because one of my advent calendars is actually a 31-day advent calendar, um, I believe. So the advent calendars that I have coming... I have one coming from Fanny of Mitaine Croquet, who I mentioned. So you can get an advent calendar from her too. I have one coming from Teresa of Pretty Twisted Yarns. So that is a yarn advent. Those are two yarn advents. Then I have an advent coming from Junk Yarn and Knit Graffiti. It was a collaboration between the two of them. This one is a fun one. So this is the one that I was talking about, the shawl I'll be knitting in December. So this is a shawl advent and every week you opened a portion of the yarn required to finish that section for the week over four weeks and there's going to be a zoom knit along and it's going to be so much fun and the whole theme is gem and the holograms yes if you remember gem i was obsessed obsessed with gem. I had gem everything. I had a gem backpack. I had a gem lunchbox. I had the doll with the earrings that light up. I mean, I had to get on this, this advent calendar. And then the last advent calendar, I believe this is the last, unless something shows up at my door that I forgot that I bought, the last advent calendar I bought is from Birdie Parker Designs. And Birdie Parker is a jewelry maker and stitch marker maker. And that is the advent calendar that's supposed to be past 25 days. I think that one is 31 days. I love her stuff so much. There is a pair of earrings that I have been eyeballing in her shop for like ever. And I need to just reach out and grab them because they're absolutely gorgeous. I'm so excited to see what's going to come in this advent calendar. I didn't do a stitch marker one this year because I have so many stitch markers and I'm not even like using them. Like I have so many, like I can't even use them all. So I didn't get a stitch marker advent this year, 
but I think the Bertie Parker one does have stitch markers in it. So it's not like I won't be getting any. I just don't have like a particular advent for stitch markers. I am actually still on the lookout for another advent calendar and I'm whispering this because I don't want my husband to know, but <laughs> I would like one more. I'm looking for something different and with the time, I don't really know if I'm going to be able to grab another one, but we'll see. We'll see. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that this podcast finds you well. I hope that everyone is doing well. Reach out to one another if there, you know, if there's something going on in your life or even just to check up on someone, reach out to someone, say hello, tell them you love them. Time is short on this earth. There's no reason to hold back love, right? So everyone, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you so much to everyone. Oh, you know what? One more thing. I want to talk about my awesome magical coven of crafters. You guys are oh, amazing. I wake up every day with joy knowing that you guys are there to talk to and to share my day and to post pictures and comment and get feedback and all sorts of things. And I'm so grateful to everyone for creating this community with me because it's not my community. It's our community. We created this feeling together. This vibe is ours. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a group on Discord, which is linked down below. It is free. There is no charge to join. However, if you would like to support the podcast or support the group in any way, monetarily, there is a link on my website, nittywitch.com in $5 increments for the um, price of a cup of coffee. You can donate and that money is used for prizes, for shipping prizes. It will be used for the fees incurred while running Zoom and those sort of things. Um, I'm looking at getting rid of Zoom, so that might not be a fee, but the it will go to the podcast if you would like to support the podcast that way. If you cannot support the podcast financially, and you would like to send something to me, please reach out to me. Do not be shy. I'm more than happy to share your guys' makes. I love sharing makers. We are a community of makers. And the only way that we are going to connect is by reaching out to each other and sharing each other's work. So I am more than happy to share your work if you are a maker and you would like to send something to me. Thank you to everyone who has done so already. I love everything and I love getting you out there. So um, just reach out to me and I will provide my address and just let me know. For the magical community of crafters, you do not have to be a witch to be a part of this group. Do not be afraid of this group because it looks witchy. Everything, this is a knitting group. It is a knitting group and it does have magical vibes, but the, you can partake of that optionally if you want. You do not have to be subjected to anything against your beliefs. Um, like everything... It has its own place. <clears throat> Everything has its own place. And we're here for the knitting. So you're not going to be bombarded with anything like that is against your religion or everybody is very accepting. This is a community of all religions. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a frog in my throat today. Everyone is welcome in this community, no matter what path you choose, because that's the thing about witchcraft. Anyone can be anything that they want to be as long as you are good in your heart. If your intentions are good and you are a good soul, that is all that you need. 
So please consider joining. Please come knit with us. Speaking of that, our holiday make along is coming up. The holiday make along, here's so here's the details for the first time and I'll put them in the group. The holiday make along is going to start on Thanksgiving because I know everyone is kind of on Thanksgiving sitting around and has, you know, sitting around with family and you're chilling inside and I know that it's a good time to start. So we're going to start this knit along on Thanksgiving and it's going to run through Christmas. So any holiday yarn works, any holiday color, any holiday for the holidays. So if that's Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or any of those colors, that works. If the name of the yarn is holiday themed, that works. I'm trying to be as inclusive as I can because I really want everyone to participate in this. I don't want to exclude anyone because they don't have the yarn. Um, and for this one, you're going to knit anything that's over, let's say, 20 grams, right? So if you knit an ornament... <laughs> you are eligible. If you knit a sweater for a toy, <laughs> you are eligible. Whatever you are making is going to be eligible for this make along. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out and I will answer them on all forms of social media. So if you want to reach out to me on Instagram, go ahead. If you want to leave a comment on this video, I will answer you. And if you want to ask in the group, I'll have the details posted up in the group as well. A lot of my knit alongs will be held in this Discord group. So if you would like to participate in this holiday knit along, please be a part of the group because it helps me to keep everything in one place and it not get lost. So we have a holiday make along thread and it's easy. So this is my solution to Ravelry. If you're not able to use Ravelry like a lot of people aren't, I'm hoping that this provides an alternative for you. Don't be discouraged about Discord. I know that it seems a little bit weird, but I promise you, this is what happens. You pop into Discord and you pop into the Hail and Welcome server is the first server that you will be welcomed into. From there, you will find on your left side of your phone or device, all of the threads that we have for there's a make along thread, there was Stephen West MCAL thread, there's witchy threads, there's knitting, crochet, spinning, you name it. And you just feel free to post whatever you want, write up a little message, and you will see everyone's messages and start interacting with everyone. It is like a chat room. Um, it is a well organized, well oiled chat room. It is like chat room 2.0. It's like an upgraded version of AOL, <laughs> but it is a great place to keep everything and everything together. So this knit along is going to be in the discord group. So like I said, it is free, but feel free to hop on into our discord and partake. So I swear, I think that's all that I have for you today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I love you all. Please be well until I see you next. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Check on each other. Drink some water. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.